Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome to The Shawnee Show and to another amazing interview episode. I just wrapped with the incredible, the talented comedian, actress, personality, host, podcast host, Leah Lamar. It was so much fun. You know, Leah has become such a good friend of mine and I have just absolutely loved getting to know her. But today we went really deep. (laughs) <laughs> well, the first half of the podcast was actually all just chaos. So hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, really speaks to the inner workings of our minds. <laughs> but then the second half of the episode, we got so deep on Leah's story. You know, she was telling me all about just the struggles that she's been through getting to where she is now. You know, people see the rise and I say this all the time. They see uh, someone go viral or someone rise really quickly and they don't realize that, that you know, it didn't happen just in that moment, in the week it took that video to go viral. This is built over years, over decades. And so we really go into Leah's story and uh, she talks about her financial hardships and just in general, all the struggles of having to audition and being in such a ruthless industry. So I I love this episode. I thought it was fantastic. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy, I think you'll even enjoy the first half because the chaos is great. I mean, if I don't say so myself. I will say that the uh, the chaos finally stopped once I got Leah a coffee. (laughs) We paused and I got her a coffee and then we started getting real deep. So it was great. Anyways, before we jump into the episode, I want to remind you guys to please follow and subscribe to the show. We're on all your favorite podcast platforms. We're also on YouTube. If you want to watch the full video versions, those are posted to YouTube. Uh, And I am posting a ton of clips to social media. So if you just don't have the time or if you don't want to sit through the whole episode, at least follow us on social. It's so much fun. Anyways, it's at Shawnee Show for the show. And then it's at Shawnee Suisa for me. And that will also be in the episode description. And then, of course, follow today's guest, Leah Lamar. The guest. Did I say that plural? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> follow Leah all over social media. She's blowing up right now on TikTok. As of right now, she's at 144.4 thousand followers. The woman got on the app literally a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. And her handle on here is Leah Lamar. <laughs> it's with five R's. It's very important that you uh, pronounce it the correct way. Leah Lamar. <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> Ah, I really wonder who has just the regular Leah Lamar handle on TikTok. Anyways, on Instagram, she is just at Leah Lamar, spelled correctly, and that's with two R's. And then I believe she is the same on Twitter. But let's just make sure. Yes, she is. She is the same on Twitter. Leah Lamar, spelled correctly. So follow her on all of those platforms and stay up to date on everything she's doing, as well as subscribing to her podcast, Real Time Crime. Um, It's a true crime podcast mixed with a ton of comedy and just her effervescent personality. So I think you guys will really enjoy that as well. You should go check it out. Anyways, enjoy the episode. Can you hear me? How's your headphone going? Baby, it's so good. Yeah? Is it good? Yeah. Does it sound smooth and silky? Soothing. Silky and smooth. Soothing. 7.2 million. Yo, that's crazy. Which means that your comment has has 2,775 (laughs) likes. Put that that next to the the mic audio. How long have you been dating? If it's more than a year, he has a huge dick. (laughs) Leah Lamar, ladies and gentlemen. Leah Lamar, and wow. I, I will tell you, I've upset so many men with small penises. And look, it doesn't. We don't care about dick size. Do we not? Do, I'm sorry. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to. Well, be nice, were you just? Know. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was hilarious. I'm capping. I'm capping. I, I wasn't even. What is fucking capping? What is that? Lying, it's just lying? bro. That's yeah, it? yeah. What is p? What is p? What is the p? <laughs> You know what, Johnny? Do, do you know? We're, we're starting real hot. Yeah, no, because your you're, you're on fucking TikTok, so you better know all this lingo. It's like taking a piss like take uh, all right yeah so like what i think it's pushing p like maybe dick pushing pushing pi- <laughs> pushin penis i can't imagine a rapper using the anatomically correct name for a dick though. no it sounds kind of weird yeah no i don't think he would do that wait so that video has how many fucking 7.2 million 7.2 million and and so many wait, how, but how many on tiktok Less on TikTok, actually. Which it, oh, is that not the video that blew up on TikTok? No, the video that blew up on TikTok was me harassing someone on New Year's Eve. Oh, it was the one about how he's not going to get laid. Yeah. Yes, I enjoyed that one. That one I has 4.2 <laughs> no. million. But the other one, and I will, t- oh, that only has uh, 36.6K on TikTok. Mm. The, the audiences between TikTok and Instagram are not the same, and I'm learning that the hard way. 
Yeah, they're not the same. As in, you really have to post on both. It's been uh, it's been obnoxious having to do that, but they are not TikTok the same. TikTok is. I can you believe they're not the same? <laughs> no, it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's just like you and I. We're like very similar, but not the but same. But we're not no. the same, same but different. Same, same but different. Yeah. Have you Look been to Thailand? No, but I have been to the restaurant. Same, same, <laughs> but different. <laughs> it's basically the same, same, just different, but different. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, what's it like blowing up on tiktok wait do you do an intro or did i already ruin the whole podcast no 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 i do the intro on our own so this is already hi <laughs> so good i love this for us what's it like blowing up on tiktok well um i almost declined the request to be on this podcast but um <laughs> yeah no it's pretty hard to get you you know having to schedule between my people and your people you know my people being a fake gmail and <laughs> yours actual people yeah well i was only yeah. 45 minutes late but that's also it's it's fine. You know, I actually preferred that because, well, I'm a lot higher now than I would have been had you been on time. So I do think that that adds a nice ambiance to the show today. <laughs> and, and I really had time to, you know, finalize everything. I mean, you came in, everything was pretty much ready. Usually I'm all flustered and a little sweaty because people are here and I'm trying to get everything set, you know. What's it like actually being ready? <laughs> You know, I, I wouldn't know. I need the adrenaline rush. You know, I need everyone to be constantly disappointed in me for me to move forward. Yeah. Oh, good job. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Muzzle toe. Speaking of, <laughs> really wish I hadn't had that burger at three in the morning. Um, yeah. So tell us how your stomach is doing. Not good. But actually better know that I had four tubs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a thing of popcorn. And this is the last time we ever heard from Leah. <laughs> I don't Woman know. dies in her car. <laughs> I don't know how you like time. It's, no, but it's great because I'm high and your stomach hurts. So this is going to be like a recipe. Yeah, for exactly the same thing. Yeah. Boo. Same, same, welcome to hell. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> R.I.P. Aww, right. I, think I, I think I might go to hell. Our real, I'll wave real to you guys R. up R. in heaven. R. Let me know how it is. Right. Yeah. You let us know how it is down there, actually. Honestly, the weather is so much better. I feel like there's really good cocaine prices. I feel like it's chilly in heaven. Yeah, I don't know. Like I just you always just need a sweater. <laughs> just a light jacket. Just light jacket. Just like a little light jazz. So, all right. So if you had to pick heaven or hell. Purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You just want to be in the waiting room forever. Yeah. Uh, I like the ambiguousness of it. You know, it's like g God is really playing a game with you. That's a mind fuck if I ever heard one. Well, I, that I would consider God a fuck boy if he left me in purgatory. I, He's like, <laughs> I can't commit. To heaven or hell, but not sure. yeah, he's yeah, not sure about yeah. you. I'm gonna give but you here's a purgatory. some picks. You'll love them. You know, here's I was yeah, was I recently in a relationship purgatory? I think you are. You not still kind of in relationship purgatory with which guy? <laughs> yeah, which, just kidding. Which which, <laughs> which which one? Which one? Um, <sighs> no, I mean, <laughs> this is going off great. I love you. I knew we had to lower the mic audio. <laughs> There was no way. I was but for me for me and Nicole, we were on full blast, baby. Oh yeah, are you gonna eat some apple or <laughs> was about to I thought you were gonna say ass. You gonna eat some ass? Yeah, is, it, is this a double are, dare podcast? Are you? I mean Yo, I eat a booty on this <laughs> What you got? Guys, as long as you washed, I'm in Guys, the What's chaos wrong with is, me? the chaos is really ensuing here. I, I have um, to say, I'm exactly the same on and off the camera though. No, you absolutely are. That's why I was very excited to have you on here. But but Leah, you know I did research on you. I like did you look through all my tweets for the last <laughs> three years? No, I mean, Am I canceled? if I did that, I wouldn't be hosting the podcast. I'd be hosting a Twitter space. You know what I mean? Uh, the truth, Leah Lamar. Yeah. I'm already emotionally rugged. Okay, so tell me what you found out about me. First of all, your IMDb is full of some good stuff. Oh my God, so juicy. <laughs> the juiciest okay there was one video that i watched that was hilarious um it was like your first one a most complex form of ventricle ventriloquism how did you even find that bro i dug deep <laughs> i dug deep you know what? i'm gonna be honest on you the little ghost and it's just so great oh my god wow uh, i'm gonna be honest i'm disturbed by Ooh. this information no me i was yeah as well when i saw it I'm about to ghost you on this podcast, bro. Uh, uh, no, you can't. You can't now. You're already seated. I'm already here. I'm yeah. sipping tea. I'm good. You're too lazy to move now. Honestly. Bro, I got yeah. you. You're here now. I gave you Tums. There's a snack bar. You're not leaving for no. a while. Yeah. You'll have to peel my dead hands <laughs> off this microphone before I leave. I think like at some point, if you want to have some snacks, we could do an ASMR episode, you know, where we 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 munch. Hold on. Stuff. I'm going to sip up. Let's just sip a munch of some... <laughs> All right, let's go back. Let's go back to TikTok because I actually really want to ask you questions about this because I feel like it's so new, it's so fresh. TikTok is fucking. I've only been on TikTok for a month. D but did you have an account before? Or you like? 
What but was the... I, I never posted. Got it, got and it. And then one day I posted a video randomly because someone was like, you should post it on TikTok. <laughs> and I was like, fuck TikTok. Nothing <laughs> ever goes viral on there. I can't make it work. And let's say, let me just look at, I'll pull up the files so we don't have to fact check me later. Yeah, pull up the receipts, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to be really researching this. So I now have 144.2K followers. Wait, what? And what? one month ago, I had 400 followers. <laughs> so a month ago, you couldn't even go live, which is where I'm at right now. <laughs> Bitch, a month ago, I didn't even tell people I had a TikTok because I was embarrassed. <laughs> And now I'm like, follow me on TikTok. Oh, oh my God. Love you can my find fans. me on TikTok. Wait, what's your handle? At? At Leah Lamar, but with five R's. <laughs> okay. Don't ask questions. So it's like Leah Lamar. Leah Lamar. Leah, Leah Lamar. So the one video that went viral handle. was on. Okay. So January 16th. That's okay. the video that went viral. Oh, I thought, I thought you were about to say January 6th. <laughs> and I'm like, interesting. <laughs> okay. Is that a special date? Yeah. Hmm. Don't know what happened then. Your birthday. Mm-mm. Was not the insurrection? Or was it January fifth? Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, I don't care about politics. But um, guys, <laughs> Leah fucked with my white balance before we started. She was matching the wall. This is a long con. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Shani, are you here from the government to ask where I was on January sixth last year? <laughs> because I have an alibi. <laughs> I would be a fantastic spy. You, no one would suspect it. Like, oh, she's laughing all the time. She can be a spy. I gotta go. Done. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly very uncomfortable have i have i blown my cover no have i blown it you're a double agent shawnee we I'm, thought you could trust you honestly i'm working for russia that's where i got all this funded from wait <laughs> who's your guy me too <laughs> no way yeah, yeah. Po Pew 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 <laughs> hey okay. wow oh my god yeah you know i think squatty potty would be a really good collab for him uh that poo pooed it <laughs> Should we give Tell our me you're mentally that? ill without <laughs> telling me you're mentally ill. Well, I made a joke about Putin's name having doo doo in it. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, you're banned everywhere. Definitely no post that to TikTok. They'll ban you. Oh, apparently TikTok doesn't like when you're like the virus came from a lab in Wuhan. <laughs> yeah, I Shocking! Right? I was like banned immediately after. Should that. I cut this clip just for my <laughs> TikTok? <laughs> And then afterwards, they'll be like, no, the virus didn't come from a lab in Wuhan. That's just misinformation from the Shawnee show. Well, I'm trying to get on the Joe Rogan podcast. So actually, if you could post that. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> I think that would be super. Should we talk about ivermectin? Let's just throw in some keywords. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, this is not visible on YouTube anymore. <laughs> okay, wait. So you got yeah, on. Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> Yo, Ghislaine Maxwell. Dude, the, the, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill the, himself. Go on. The turtle. Wow, these are great SEOs for later <laughs> on in the description. The turtleneck really gives me Elizabeth Holmes vibes. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the voice thing is weird. Well, yeah. Yes. I mean, if I was also trying to sell a fake company and. Would, would you do that? That would be your the way you would do it i'd also change my entire face I, oh yeah <laughs> well just so that i could peel it off after and then be a real person and then run from the oh. people of the world for the rest of my life <laughs> okay so so what you would do is have the disguise first while you're committing the crime and then go back to being leah most women in la get the disguise <laughs> immediately <laughs> and then keep it for a lifetime and you know all i'm here is to say is that filler is dissolvable oh so, uh, is it that's a really good should we put that out as a psa guys filler it's dissolvable we recommend yeah. it so if you're trying to commit a crime get yeah. the filler first <laughs> or or reverse you know or just pop it with your real face and then all of a sudden you're super hot it's like no way this hot woman could have committed a crime uh, I would like to get filler. What it scares me though. What kind of crime would you commit? Thank you for breezing past that. If you, well, <laughs> we can't. I mean, I gotta dive into that one. We can't just. What kind on. of crime would I commit? Yeah, it like, could definitely be a crime of passion. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. This is excellent. Well, speaking of, you do I mean, have a true you? crime podcast. So I'm do. assuming there would be some. So, what kind of crime of passion? Give me the details. Well, I'd probably murder someone in cold blood. Oh, okay. That I was having sex with if they were cheating on me. I want the weapon and the location. Is this clue? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was the it was the candlestick in the kitchen. <laughs> Set you up for that one. Hey. <laughs> it was Leo with the candlestick in the Cur kitchen. Colonel Lamar. <laughs> yeah. Murdering her ex-husband in a crime of passion. Can I tell you? I wearing, felt a, <laughs> wearing Gucci and Valentino. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I just if, if it's going to be like my scenario, I would like to paint myself at least in a stylish light. Well, I think you look good in that. Yeah, you look good. So yeah. your hair, makeup done, all glam. 
earrings on? Yeah, there's going to be a full glam squad before the murder. Colonel I mean, Leah I'm not going. In the billiards room. Look, do you understand how expensive headshots are? With the Oscars When award. I go get my mugshot, <laughs> I'm having full hair and makeup done. Using that photo for everything. I don't know if they give you the time to do that. Well, it's a Hobbit done before. You It'll get, just be good for merch. You have to. <laughs> no, but essentially you just have to commit the murder looking really good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to plan out the murder. Yeah. 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 And you can't, you can't get blood splatter on your face unless you do it kind of in a nice way where it sort of falls in the contour, you know? Or just like blush. Like yeah. I just blended it. <laughs> yeah. Just or blue. lipstick. Yeah. Wow. This is very dark. Mm, this is great. Yes. So. Welcome to the Shawnee show. <laughs> how has therapy been going then? Yes. <laughs> you know, honestly, I, I should go back, but, um. <laughs> she won't call me <laughs> my therapist ghosted me oh no that's not what happened here's what actually happened okay at the beginning of the pandemic mm -hmm. my therapist god bless her was a literal angel she's not dead she's just dead to me <laughs> but um <laughs> no no i honestly incredible person but did she, you she kill just, her in a crime of fashion no there's nothing i'm not having sex with an 80 year old woman <laughs> okay <Shani. laughs> i don't know i don't know judgment here yeah no we ain't pushing pee there um but she was she she was very old and so she is a genius however she didn't really quite understand millennial drama you know i'd be like he read my message but then didn't respond like he left me on scene and she was just like uh-huh so we're gonna call him scene? and i'm like excuse <laughs> me um anyway so at the beginning of the pandemic she suggested that i join the peace corps this why? is real why because i talk about myself a lot <laughs> I was like, this is why I pay you so I can talk about myself for an hour. Uh, and then you discovered Clubhouse. <laughs> Perfect timing. Honestly, yeah. basically our own virtual Peace Corps. So so she suggested the Peace Corps and then you ghosted her. She ghosted you. Well, she I don't think she believed in my ability to make it as an artist. Oh, that's unfortunate. I think she did kind of. I was honestly really struggling financially and emotionally. I mean, and sexually. It, I actually have never said this on a podcast, but it's true. I was on um, like food stamps for a while. Were you? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was catering. I was walking dogs. I was. But what a lot is, of people. What just, is it like to get beyond? What is the process of getting on food stamps? I can't recall. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So if you guys want to get on food stamps too, just reach out to Leah for more advice. <laughs> you know, it's so weird when you. Um, just uh I, I just a very selective memory mm, yeah you know like i do remember the time that i met brad pitt and leonardo dicaprio but i don't remember the process to get on food stamps <laughs> how, how long were you on food stamps for on and off for maybe four years oh wow mm -hmm. wow and i was also on unemployment before the pandemic not at that time but six years prior okay um you know, a lot of actors are on unemployment right. because after you book a big job, you basically can just get the maximum of unemployment. So that's, oh, that's good. So a lot of actors just don't work because they're collecting unemployment. How much do you get for unemployment after like a big job? I don't remember. Honestly, it's like 700 something a week. Oh, that's not that's not fucking bad. No. What the hell? OK. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's like you can't live off it. I mean, yeah, but you, you know, but you can't not, not yeah. live off of it. You know, <laughs> yeah, if yeah. your rent is cheap, you might be OK. Yeah. And th this is so funny. I actually, you know, I, I do tell people this, but I don't really publicize how broke I was and mentally ill, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> severely mentally ill. I'm on two antidepressants. I'm proud right now. Yeah. Which one? Zoloft and Wellbutrin. Oh, I hear Wellbutrin is great. It's a combination called Welloft. Yeah. And that's a joke. Big Pharma wrote. <laughs> Um, I didn't know Big Pharma was so funny. So funny. Wow. Yeah, classic Big Pharma. Just yeah, just hilarious. Cracking you us know, up. Just, yeah, always, Jokes left and right. Always killing murderers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really is a double entendre. This podcast and that sponsored great. by <laughs> <laughs> Eccentric. Okay, I don't know why I threw Eccentric on the bus. Uh, Eccentric, you're cool. <laughs> Eccentric, yeah, we don't have anything to. Yeah, we we'll fuck. We fuck with you, Eccentric. Okay, okay, so so you were just dirt broke. So broke. Was that when you first got to LA or was it like after a bit? So when I first got to LA, I was tuck and rolling off of working at the corporate headquarters of a bank for two and a half years. A very interesting position for you. Odd. <laughs> very. You know, you can't wear a crop top to a bank. It's very strange. That's so fucking weird. I yeah. could not imagine I that. did not fit in there. I was everyone's junior by 15 years minimum. 
And everyone, I would have the party desk. You know, people would come to check in to be like, hey, like, so what's, what are the kids doing? You yeah, know, it's like people without a personality just trying to get any sort of life into their juices. Well, I didn't say that, but yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> no, no, there are a lot of really smart, funny, uh, interesting people who work in the C-suite level. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You can't just be a dull carrot. A carrot? Are carrots dull? I like carrots. I don't know. Celery. So Cel- you can't be a dull celery. Yeah. <laughs> celery is basically flavorless. And and be that successful. Right. You just can't. I don't and I believe that to be true for almost any position. I think that you'll find anyone who is a, a top bit exec- of charisma. Charis- well charisma. Wow. Whether or not they're charismatic, they're at least interesting. Mm, mm. You know, because you have to be Well, I think anybody is interesting if you get the right things out of them. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Did I really just give you a lot to think about there? Yeah, yeah I'm. Uh, I'm hurting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm special, and then I was like, Oh wait. Oh well, you're very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Okay. <laughs> um, no, no. So, so I had been. I was on unemployment. Okay. No, but so you're working at this bank. No, no. So when I left the bank, okay. I was on unemployment. Right. And I was just coasting. And I think that I was healing from doing a job that I was never meant to do and never wanted to do, but I was just trying to appease my family okay? because they just wanted stability for me. Mm. You know, I was always pushed away from the arts, even though it's all I ever wanted to do. And it's where I was actually most talented. And I had actually originally been pushed into math and science because there weren't enough women in math and science. And so we were like, oh, we hope she gets into STEM. And, and I, you know, did breast cancer research at Tufts University Medical School, Medical School when I was in high school. Did you? It, it, there are a lot of twists and turns in this story. I did medical science at Oxford when I was in high school for a summer. Oh, my God. Look yeah. how smart we are. Yeah, I got to, like, dissect a sheep's lung and shit. It was crazy. Yeah, tell me you're Jewish without telling me you're Jewish. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and then I also did speech and debate. That was a great time. Speech and debate. Yeah. Yeah. So Which I do very, so, very yeah, first, well, apparently. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have to work on the speech part. <clears throat> but the debate part, you got down. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I will argue with anyone. Wait, so uh, so you did that. Uh, you were pushing STEM. And well, no, I mean, they, they just really wanted to push young women into science. Yeah, it was a big thing. I remember that. Like, girls who code, get into this. Da, da, da. And it makes sense. And I was good at it. So they wanted to push me into it. But it wasn't ever something that I was wanted to do. I think I thought it was the highest form of intelligence. So I was OK being pushed into that sphere. And I was like, maybe I'll be a neuroscientist. Maybe I'll be a neurosurgeon. Maybe I'll. You know, and I, maybe I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a veterinarian. There, I had all these different paths, and I was a biochem major in college. And you were a biochem major in college. Lots of twists. Did and you turns. finish that all no. four years? What did you do? You started one year, two years, two years, and then, and then you left and came to LA. No, where'd you go? I graduated. Oh, what did you finish out with? Acting? Great question. Yeah, religious studies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, you did not. You finished your degree with religious studies, Leah. What? Hello, Rev Leah. Rabbi, I did not know we were in your presence. My God. I can't. Hello. Yes. Yeah. And that's why every time I have sex with a man, I say, <clears throat> welcome to the temple. Yeah. <laughs> Please wow. bow down. But. Uh, well, I mean, you're kind of a cult leader for a bit. I still am. Yeah. A little bit. Supreme Leah. It's. Yeah. It's a uh, has a real ring to it. Now I know where it comes from. Yeah. You studied that shit. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you did. You, but, so and, you started with biochem. Switch to religious studies because it was the only thing that I could actually finish and Did you still just graduate. switch once? And to uh, a second major, an inter- interdisciplinary major in film and theater performance. Okay. Um, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I find religion very interesting and I studied Islam and Hinduism. Was that your two? Like, did you not study Judaism at all? I did, but it was kind of my second dairy focus, mm. tertiary focus. Mm. That's so interesting. I didn't know you studied religions like that. I didn't know either. Yeah. I honestly yeah. forgot until we just brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do, it you, just, do you ever think back <clears throat> to your life and be like, I don't even know who that is? Um, yes. Yes. In seventh grade, I once ate lunch in the bathroom to be dramatic. <laughs> People do that to be dramatic? I, just, I did. I didn't realize uh, that you couldn't just do that all the time. <laughs> no, I just really wanted someone to notice. You know, it's interesting. I made a scene about it too. I like dropped my bag. I just know time is money. So I just thought you were being... You know, really efficient, <laughs> efficient with your time. That's hilarious. Oh, I do know you have a bit about that. Yeah, I do. I saw that it's coffee at the YouTube video posted from seven years ago. At the yeah, I don't cap. tell that joke yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 
I'm telling you, I did some serious research. I went back. I went back. Although not apparently on any of this education stuff. So, okay, carry on. <clears throat> not as interesting. So you, gradu- you graduated. Or so they say. I still have nightmares that I didn't graduate. That they'll like take a credit back or something. Holy- well, that happened to me. What? So I, I, uh, yeah. So I, I went traveling to South and Central America thinking that I just had one more paper to turn in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I and I paid someone to turn the paper, and and then I found out that it was late and not good enough, and also that I needed like five other more classes. <laughs> it was a horrible realization. So I went, but then it was kind of cool because then I could go back to Tel Aviv, which was fun. So then I went back to LA, worked for like eight months, and then I went back to Israel and did that semester. And then it just chilled till the end of the year, and then graduated, and then came back here. We love a good chill year. Yeah, it took me like six years from start to finish. We love a victory lap. Yeah, but <laughs> with like two. a year and a half in between of like, you know, fucking off to South America. I did nine months South and Central America. Doing what? Like <laughs> having fun. <laughs> it's the best time of my life. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. I wish I had more fun. I never studied abroad. Oh, I did. I I think I, I mean, I, I like that I had so much fun and I was so... Mm not into working and like anything along those lines for a long time because I knew that I needed that and I knew that once I started I wouldn't stop and that's kind of what's been happening the last few years and it's true I mean I really haven't stopped like it's been exhausting so I'm really happy I did that yeah but I would love to do like another month long trip another this long trip like just again I used to do those all the time I would do like a month to Mexico a month to Thailand a month to just random places. I did like three and a half weeks in South a- South Africa and then Berlin for a couple weeks right after that. I need to take a page out of your book. It was a good time. Leo, let's go travel. Honestly? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are going to Vegas soon. Fuck yeah. Hey. That's not traveling though. <laughs> and possibly Austin, which is really also not traveling. Well, I'll be in Austin for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might I'll be at South by. I think you should come. We yeah. decided, by the way, yeah. we're not saying South by Southwest. No, we're it's South so by. hard. Why is it so hard to say the whole name? Also, does Southwest sponsor South by? <laughs> South, by South, not, South by Southwest. South yeah. by Southwest. Also, like, choose a different airline, bro. You South, know, yeah. South by Delta. Why, you don't like Southwest? <laughs> I don't mind. I've heard good things. <laughs> There's no first class, Shawnee. I'm so Coming sorry. from someone who used to be on food stamps. Um. Um, honestly, I only fly private, so I wouldn't really know too much about the commercial airlines. But um, yeah, sorry about that. No. Uh, okay. Okay. So go back to go back to you're in LA. So you move from when do you move to LA? You go to New York for a bit, right? Yeah, that's when I was working at the bank. Where did you go to school? Virginia. UVA. Okay. I actually just met. Uh, Matt Stefanina. I actually don't know. Matt Stefanina. Stefanina. I love him. He's, He's great. He's from Charlottesville, which no is way. where UVA is. Oh my God. It, the chances are so slim. He is the nicest guy. I adore him. Yeah, he's so sweet. Have you seen his little cat that they they now recently adopted? No. They like found it in the streets, the cutest thing. Or no, they somebody had a litter. I don't know, it's so adorable. I mean, he's also super funny. So, yeah. and anytime someone is funny and we have the same sense of humor, I'm just in. Yeah. Yeah, th- that is a good I mean, yes. So in. Yes, that's a match for friendship. And, oh, but also that's that has gotten me into trouble with dating. <laughs> yeah, because there are some people I should never have dated. But because they were funny. But they made me laugh. Were they cute, funny, and smart? And you were just like, I can't help it. One was balding and fat, but I was just like, I'll learn to love him. Wow, balding and fat? I was in a moment. You went, were you on food stamps? I had just got, <laughs> honestly, probably. Yeah. I had just tuck and rolled out of a really bad relationship. And so this guy was just nice to me. And I think that that's literally what I needed at that time. And my self esteem is really low. Tuck and rolled into his rolls. <laughs> I wish it was his Rolls Royce. Am I going to get canceled for that one? <laughs> oh, but it wasn't. Uh, it was not. No. 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 All He's right. a lovely person. Just what, do you, are you friends with him still? No. 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 He, he, he doesn't talk to me. Oh, no? Oh, he doesn't talk to you? It's not the other way around? I think I hurt his feelings. Oh. Hey, breakups are hard. And he's a really sweet person. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I think I was also in a weird, dark place. Would you rather be the person to hurt someone or get hurt? Well. (laughs) (laughs) As they maniacally laugh. (laughs) I mean, I'm in a situation right now that's super uncomfortable. Yeah. It's uncomfortable for all of us, really. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, everyone in the text group, uh, um, in the group chat. I don't know why I said text group. The text group. Wow, you sound I didn't like you're a therapist. Today. You sound like a therapist. Would you like some? I have many a coffee drink. Available. Honestly, Shawnee, you should join the Peace Corps. You talk about yourself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. I was like, are you sending me on a suicide mission? <laughs> They're like, we need you to be less of a narcissist. You'll like, really enjoy it there. I'm like, you must have a hard time with all your clients in LA. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. If she can't handle you. She can't handle And you only just became a TikTok star. I so the just personality just changed. Yeah. You know, it's like, this hasn't been always there. This I, comes with the following, you guys. I will say my following has completely exploded. It's unbelievable to see. I, the Instagram, TikTok. You know, I'll be honest. I thought that this was all so far out of my control, but it's luck. Mm. And I just caught fire. But I have to, not to toot my own horn, but it's like, there's part of it is luck, right? But then the other part is preparation, right. hard work, talent, time. Consistency. Consistency, right? So it's like, you for me to say that this was just luck, takes away from the fact that I also have worked really hard for over a decade. Mm. And, you know, it's like, then I would have to say clubhouse was just luck. Then I have to say, it's like, then it takes away from everything I've done just by saying it was just dumb luck. No, it's like, I have the content. I filmed every show I've done. I literally spend my evenings syncing up audio and video from shows I've done and cutting out crowd work clips and subtitling them to be ready to post twice a day on TikTok. Yeah. And now on my Instagram, my reels are popping. Yeah, your reels are. It's crazy. I'm literally getting followers from the comment I left on your reel. You are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for pinning that. Yeah. But yeah. but my Instagram doubling followed in under two weeks. Your Instagram following doubled. I'm broken. <laughs> I didn't have enough coffee. I didn't. I put my Invisalign in too soon and it's a cut off the amount of coffee I could have and just... Here we I've are. been having too much caffeine. I hope I don't start shaking by the end of this. It's can we been, pause and get a coffee? It's, yeah, you want a coffee? I I don't think I'll be able to finish We can sentences. absolutely do that. The only person finishing this sentence will be <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Just kidding. He's dead. Um, <laughs> I'm like a football player, Shawnee. I've hit my head so many times. A linebacker? <laughs> yeah, I'm like a football player. I like it from behind. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ooh. I don't aren't know anything about football. Are you, you still an anal virgin? I am. <laughs> when I, uh, when it's I my dowry. <laughs> saving it for my husband. When I told my sister that uh, the Super Bowl was on, she was like, is that the Dodgers? <laughs> no, I think it was the Florida Marlins. <laughs> oh, yes. They won this year. Did they? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Go sports. <sighs> also, I like that you're wearing a shawl like an old Jewish woman. Uh, it's really because I think I have sweat stains. Oh. Yeah. You're so creative. Thank you so much. So, so incredibly I just like to think beautiful. outside the box, you know? And You know what, Shawnee? Wow, please keep going. I'd like to go back. To a time mm -hmm. where we talked about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to after college. <laughs> hey, Leah, you should do the P square. <laughs> I think it would really help. <laughs> I don't think they'd want me. I think they'd return me to America. They'd be like, unfortunately, this is a program about others, ma'am. I don't know if you'd be able to focus. I would just be like, I'm sorry, I can't eat gluten. I can't eat dairy. And um, um, I honestly, I mean, do these look like the hands of the working <laughs> class? They'd be like, get this fucking bitch out of here. Do these look like the hands of the working <laughs> class? I, I don't, I don't. Honestly, do mine that. sometimes do. Yeah. That or I would like turn, um, I would have everyone like doing their nails together and they'd be like, all right. You're supposed to build a school. I, <laughs> oh, my God. All right. You graduate college. I'd be like, so where's the mall? <laughs> the funny thing is that I'm not like this at all, but it's just fun to say. You know me. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I barely own anything. I don't have anything designer, actually. I don't even. What is a designer? Uh, someone who made this pussy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing designer I have is my ass. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> we'll leave them wanting more. Wait, so let's go back to you, Leah. Thank you. Let's go back to you. Please, I would love to talk about you. Well, no, no. I. You know what? I do think it's important to talk about how this journey has not been glamorous at all. I agree with that. And that's actually what I've been trying to get out on my show for a lot of people because I feel like so many people see the rise and I say this all the time, but they don't see the, the insane journey. This, a blow up, you know, just cause someone goes viral within a week does not mean that that took a week to happen, right? It's a lot of work. Like you're saying it is luck, but it, you can't negate all of the effort you've put to get to this point, right? You didn't like, it's, I, I'm sorry. And also Clubhouse, how many people got on Clubhouse the same time as you that did not become Leah Lamar on Clubhouse, you know? So I'm sorry, but like there is definitely a lot just, there. Just to be clear, also the icon. Go on. Also <laughs> also the icon, ladies and gentlemen. Very humble. That yeah. was actually really fucking cool opening my app. And I was like, I know her. I hang out with her. 
Like she's seen me naked. <laughs> I like how you didn't add she's my friend. You were just like, she's seen me naked and I hang out with her. It's like, it just makes me sound like we have casual sex. Not, don't. What? Is that not what we've been doing? Well, okay. define sex. No, it's good to know where I wanted to know where we were at. So this is this is good. I, I'm, I'm glad really we got glad in. we had a DTR on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, really got into it. <laughs> been having a lot of these recently. So let's let's get into your journey. So okay, you graduate college with a re- you think. religion. <laughs> for, we're not sure yet. It's, to, it's pending. Uh, pending. Yeah. Um, to be determined. So you graduate with a religious degree and a minor, or was it was a double major in film and whatever. A double mage. Okay, double mage, and then. What happens then? You move to New York? I just want to let everyone know I'm canceling myself after saying double mage. D- okay. I'm officially canceled. We're going to host a space on that later. Thank All right. you. Perfect. 3,000 people. <laughs> Are you talking about 9-11? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a fit. We've hit all of the keywords to make sure this never gets shown on YouTube. Keep talking. <laughs> never gets shown on YouTube. We've said every single word possible. You don't cut anything Have we out? dropped Trump? No. Uh, I mean, I'm probably not going to cut this stuff out. It's gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I've been trying to get canceled for years. The time is now. Okay. World War Three. Q and Oh, shit. We're really adding them all in there. 4chan. <laughs> oh. 4chan is honestly a genius name 4chan it's like fortune <laughs> <laughs> well it would not they should make a 4chan cookie <laughs> Ding. that would be delicious i'd eat any cookie really it'd be delicious and delightful and it'd i'd like del- it in my mouth it'd be delicious and i'd enjoy it okay so what you did nothing after graduating college Why i have really bad ADD, so you're gonna have to just keep <laughs> me on track because i could literally go off on tangent after you're like tangent. let's talk about me but never will i answer what i did after <laughs> college that would be impossible well See, i just you graduated. <laughs> it's not true. i need to cut Why a, am i like this i need to cut a clip of all the times i've been like so you graduate college and then what happens <laughs> and I'm going to put them all side by side. The question that never got answered. Will we ever find out what happened after college? And some might say Leah is still in college <laughs> to this day. <laughs> she's still in Virginia. This is actually the metaverse people. This is Leah's avatar. She's been in Virginia this entire time. It's it, my hologram. <laughs> you look so real. Oh my God. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. The tech is really good. The when graphics you work for are the government. amazing. <laughs> who's, the, who's the artist? The CIA. <laughs> I've got a lot of government secrets through my hair. Your floor price might be must be high. Yo. Or 69. inflated. <laughs> or inflated as fuck because it's coming from the US government. Okay, so please. No one's you? gonna listen to this what? podcast. <laughs> I think people are gonna are gonna Really? They obviously okay, I'm just gonna say this. If you're still with us, thank you. You're a genius. If you're still with us, can you just drop a comment? Please let if, us know that you made it to this point of the show. If you're still with us, are you Kanye or Pete fans? <laughs> Ski. Kanye, or, are you team Kanye or team Scoot? Scoot, 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 Scoot. Scoot, Scoot. I think I'm, Scoot. I'm obviously team Kanye. I'm, uh, so I love Kanye because yeah. I'm a fan of the mentally Mental ill. Level. Yes, because I have many uh, relative with mental illness. And so it's really just a relatable moment. Like I felt like him when that whole thing was happening. And I just thought, thank God I'm not famous. Well, when we've had outbursts, you know? Yeah, just wait till you drop your sex tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, I, I have been thinking about that actually lately. Ooh. Yeah. I am considering. So I'm, I'm just trying to time it. I would leak a photo of my boobs. They're per- they're literally perfect. Yours are great. But also it's like, it's not too sexual where mm-hmm. I would feel really bad about it being on the internet. Right. You know, right. it's not like full, like spread open, like I, that right. would be pornographic to me and mm-hmm. I wouldn't want that, but just boobs. I'm like, that's like HBO. What about like a Paris Hilton-esque sex tape where it's like all greened out and stuff? You know, I never watched it. <gasps> wow, you didn't download it on LimeWire? No, I... What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, I'm only 22, <laughs> and so I don't even know what LimeWire is. What is LimeWire? <laughs> I never watched it. Mm-hmm. You know what? I just never had the desire. Hmm. I kind of felt sorry for the situation. I think now I wouldn't. I was just like, this is none of my business. Mm-hmm. I was a child though, so no, intrigued. no, 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 no. That makes sense. I think I just had a lot of guilt and shame around sex in general, mm-hmm. and even clicking on links that had anything to do that could have been a pornographic nature. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, where's the dungeon board? <laughs> <laughs> That escalated really fast, you know? Like it went from I had the prudest childhood and I was so shamed. Oh dear master, dear lord. 
please tell me it's not gonna be okay <laughs> you know and then it was like dungeons so yeah that's yeah, great there's for you. a master down there too wow dungeons and dragons so um after college right <laughs> i don't do heroin Shani. <laughs> <laughs> so you graduate college uh, at university of virginia went back to new york had a oh here we go okay so you went back to new york <laughs> yeah went back great. to new york i worked at the reception desk at a production company Wait, back to your parents house oh yeah oh okay um great so you can relate to me here well, only for six months. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Not a lifetime, <laughs> Shawnee. <laughs> you know, I've been on my own financially since I was 18. I mean, I was away. I came back. But, yeah, that, wow, really? Mm -hmm. Completely? 100% mm -hmm. independent? Yeah, I have so many student loans. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My, I mean, my parents, I was on their cell phone plan maybe until I was like 24. Okay. And then I was promptly dropped because I kept going over the limit. Oh, God. <laughs> Apparently you can't or call you people when it's not nights your, or weekends. Your French boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of international uh, boyfriends. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, I really didn't get any help. I've paid my own rent. I've paid, you know, it's, it was tough. Yeah, that is really hard. It, completely financially independent. And I will also say not fully supported in my pursuit of the arts at any point right. until recently. Do you think you would have been supported by your parents more if you had gone into? No. No. There just wasn't money to give. Mm, mm -hmm. And that's not their fault or their problem. Right. A lot of people get cut off at 18. I just don't think a lot of people who come from my community do. Yeah, it's not as common, I think, from especially like the friends that we mingle in now. Right. Uh, that's for sure. And, you know, I always say, me and my siblings, we always talk about how grateful we are because that happens to so many people. And it's, you know. I come from a very different socioeconomic background. And I don't think that people would ever think that I, even when I was on food stamps, no one would ever look at me and think that I was having a hard time financially. And I really had the starving artist mentality. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of complaining, a lot of, oh, woe is me. Why not me? How come not me? Mm -hmm. um, and I thought everything had to be hard. And I think when you don't think when you don't have a good role model of how money should exist in your life, yeah. it's hard to make better financial decisions. And when you're scared to ask for help from people, I was loaned money by friends, paid them back, but took a minute. Mm -hmm. And that felt really shameful and guilty. And I, the idea of asking someone for money makes me, I couldn't ask my family for money. Makes me feel ill. You just didn't have that example of how to sort of deal with money. So it almost became. Well, I just thought like I was living very paycheck to paycheck, like month to month. Were you working through college then? I was doing um, like student like work. Oh, oh, where you work at the school cafeterias and things like that. Like things like I was yeah, like working yeah, yeah. at the religious studies department. Right. And like, oh, at the temple at school. <laughs> wow. Great. For the four Jews. Yeah. You know, I will say very anti-Semitic. Where? The heart of Virginia. I'm actually, I'm not surprised about that. I mean, and, yeah. And they did not have a system in place to deal with anti-Semitism. In fact, when I uh, spoke to the guidance counselors about it, they were like, just transfer if you have a problem. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Is that what they said? Yeah, that is what they said. And how like, many other, were there other Jews? They how were many? like, we know this is a problem, but there's nothing we can do to stop it, basically. <laughs> you know, that's not what they said, but that's what they said in so many. There were not that many Jews. I mean, it's Virginia. But... I think I, I was the first Jew a lot of people met. Mm. You know, people would come up to me and want to shake my hand or just be like, it's so nice to meet you. You're the first Jew I've ever met. God, that's so crazy. People would come up to me when they were wasted and be like, okay, since like we're friends, can you tell me the truth? And I'd be like, about what? And they'd be like, where do you keep your horns? And they were serious. Yeah, it's fucked up. And it is just bizarre to me. You know, I got dumped because I was Jewish. I was dating this guy for a couple of weeks and he was like, honestly... I like you so much, but my parents would hate you mm. as a friend. They'd like you, but as anything more, they would just absolutely hate you and reject you. God, that's so rough. I was rejected at UVA more times than a 21 year old at Epstein Island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a 25 year old with Leo. <laughs> Too old for him. <laughs> Way too old. Way too old. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So. Uh, so. So it was a big. Did challenge. you ever? Did you ever feel unsafe? Yes. Like remember, physically unsafe. Yeah. yeah. I remember there were a few times at night where I'd be walking with maybe like one or two girlfriends, and we'd be 
going to, to frat houses or parties, or whatever. There was this one time this guy goes, hey, are you that Jew from New York? Oh, God. And I remember my whole body tensed up. I, if I wasn't wasted off my ass, I was tense, you know? And he was like, at least you're not a big, fat, ugly Jew. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God, you think I'm pretty? Uh, <laughs> You're like, wow. <gasps> yeah. No, but this sort of stuff happened all the time. It was kind mm. of, and I, I got a very thick skin toward it, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't have a thick skin toward anti-Semitism. No. You should have you shouldn't. other people want to help and embrace the fact that you are being discriminated against, but there just wasn't really a, a culture that was, um, well, I'll also say this now that I'm, have my thinking cap on. Mm just anti-semitism was one faction of discrimination there so racist mm. the school well was, i'm not surprised if they're that anti-semitic well the school was built by slaves oh wow i was a tour guide there and i used to give wow it's a unesco world heritage site so i used to give tours of this historical property and there were we would literally show people the slave grounds and you know thomas jefferson ha is Th thomas jefferson's university he created the school and while we all know what he did, mm -hmm. he also, you know, there are Jeffersons who are not white. So <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact, <gasps> you know, um, but yeah, the entire school and Monticello, his home was built by slaves as well. So, okay. So you're at this, is there, is there There's, a Hillel or a Chabad or anything at this school? Cause there I was mean, both, I think. And right? I was, I was partially involved. Did you ever go to the Shabbat dinners at all or? I, because I feel like I, I've just never heard of a university that there isn't at least a s small community. Of it Jews. was very small. Right. And right. I went to Birthright the first year I was there. And the people I went to Birthright with are some of the only people I'm still friends with from college. Were they at was a Birthright trip from your school? Mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody was from your school on that trip. Mm -hmm. So there was still a small Jewish community. It was just obviously. And how did, how did everybody else cope with it? Like what was the kind of general vibe? You know, was it sort of undiscussed? I don't know. Yeah, it, I I wasn't. I was kind of just dipping my toe into it when it was convenient. Mm -hmm. On that's my honest truth. I I wasn't really identifying super hard as Jewish once I felt scared. Right. And it's you know hard for me to not be Jewish. <laughs> Look at my fucking face <laughs> and my whole persona. <laughs> and I I leaned away from it. I was really scared. Yeah. And I remember even coming back to New York thinking, ooh, I don't want anyone to think I'm Jewish. I had that feeling, that very f scared feeling of being terrified that, I mean, my roommate in college was from Little Rock, Arkansas, and her dad was a pastor at a mega church. And I was driving us back to my parents' house for Thanksgiving. We were driving north. How long is that drive? too long when you're with someone who <laughs> is scared of Jews, but it was seven and a half hour long drive. Oh, scared of Jews. No, 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 she wasn't. And, and I think she's changed a lot, but she literally in the car was like, you know, I'm just so happy that you're Jewish because when the rapture happens, <laughs> I'm sorry, what can you just, what? <laughs> Fucking because what? when the rapture happens and I get saved, uh huh, right. Jews get a second chance. And if you survive the plagues it's like on earth years, for seven yeah, years yeah, it's and you accept Jesus's light into your heart and accept him as your Lord and savior, we can be together in heaven. It's so nice. And I was her. like, pull over the car, you know, just <laughs> like the kindness. Wow. I'm like, these are things you can't say to my parents. <laughs> it's crazy. Did she actually go to Thanksgiving that year? She did. How, what was that like? She was also a very bulimic. There were a lot of things happening. It, there's so many factors at play here. Also, I will just say this. My favorite thing about UVA is how many girls thought having anal was saving yourself for marriage. Shut up. Was that a big thing? So many girls, because they're good little Christian girls, <laughs> only had anal sex but wouldn't have vaginal sex. Ow. And I'm like, you are more of a whore uh, than I am. Yeah. Literally. Absolutely. I'm an anal virgin. I don't Do think that. Do you wish you could get into this asshole? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a great line. I'll keep that. Wow, you should use that for merch. Do you wish you Do could get into this asshole? <laughs> Maybe it'll be underwear. <laughs> oh, it's a great underwear. I'm sure I'm making my parents very proud right now. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Clearly. Hey, mom and dad, I'm an anal version. <laughs> but it's true. So moving on. Uh, okay. So wait. So, <laughs> so, so, how did you? I'm going to watch myself when I walk to my car tonight. Okay. Uh, what? How did you support your, like, did your student loans cover cost of living as well to a certain extent? So 
Yes. Okay. Um, but you know, it made it really hard for me when I graduated and I was making minimum wage, making thirty thousand dollars on in New York City. Mm-hmm. You and with student loan paying six hundred dollars a month on student loans Crazy. plus rent, I was in the red every month. So I wasn't even able to save. And so I got into more and more debt. The credit card debt? Everything. Mm. And so... Did you take out other loans? Well, then I was trying to postpone my loans and defer them. When you defer them, it adds interest. So you go into more debt. And, you know, I got into some credit card trouble. I mean, there were some dark times. Really dark times. I was sharing a bedroom that was the size of a, of a queen-size bed. So the, the bedroom is literally just a bed. Mm-hmm. With another person. Wow. How much did that cost? Six hundred three thousand. No, I think it was like eight hundred. Yeah. Wow. I mean it's affordable, but I mean New York. Dear Lord. Yeah. Then I was sleeping on the couch for a few weeks. Just stuff that you wouldn't expect from someone who looks like me. And I and I say that just as a fact. Yeah. I don't think anyone would ever look at me and think that I've had hardship, period. I don't think that they would. I agree with that. And then I started working at the bank and I was making way more money okay so the bank was a job in new york yes okay got it and i was making making way more money there but i'm an idiot Mm. (laughs) (laughs) yeah you gotta take into account that i'm an idiot and this is where i lose the audience okay (laughs) i was like i gotta go to coachella Uh, so instead of paying my loans oh god bad very bad i was like but i should live my life i can't just punish myself and not be young and free and in my early 20s and not make i do kind of agree to that i mean i never i've never even been to europe i still haven't even traveled yeah, we need to go places. We yeah. need to go places. Yeah. I'm there now. You know, yeah. like mentally, I'm like, let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I had a real scarcity mentality back then. Mm-hmm. And people would come to my apartment and be absolutely baffled. I lived in a six floor walk up with a heroin addict. Uh, okay. That sounds ho- horrible. Yeah. We had one bathroom and it was covered. But this is while you're working at the bank, you're mm-hmm. working at this place? Mm-hmm. Why? And I, it was what I could afford. But didn't you, ha, was the salary increase just like a little bit? Yeah, because then taxes are still taken out. Right, 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 right. So it's like I was making more money. Not, I was making 45000 Okay, okay, okay. Which okay. is still. So you weren't like at 60 or anything like that yet. No. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Okay. No, and I was like 24. So yeah, six-story walk-up sounds about right at 45. And and you lose friends when you're in a six floor walk up, you know. I would never right tell around them, the third floor is when you start losing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would I would never tell them the sixth floor. I would tell them apartment twenty seven, <laughs> and so they'd think it was the second floor. And then I get a phone call every time. It's like, um, how many more flights is this? And I'm like, just a, <laughs> just keep going. Can you imagine heels? trying to get a one night stand up six flights of stairs? Well, I lived in Tel Aviv, and that was pretty common. I've never had a one night stand, by the way. I can do it. Not relate. <laughs> Do you like that I'm coming alive now that I have coffee? Yeah. Yes. No coffee, no worky. You know, that's literally my mantra. No, I agree with you. This was my third cup. The second one I had, though, was decaf. Queen. (laughs) Do you like how big my mugs are, by the way? Honestly? Yeah. I don't know what's bigger, your ego or your mug. (laughs) My ego, for sure. (laughs) It's my ego. Yeah, it's a small mug. Yeah, this is a small mug compared to that. I don't know what's bigger. My ego. (laughs) Obviously, my ego. (gasps) Oh, my God. Okay, so... You're in New York, you're working at this bank, you're living in a six-story walk-up, and you're doing the bank, what, for two years, you said? Two and a half years. And I, like I said, was my, the apartment that I, I was always an illegal Craigslist subletter. Mm-hmm. I never, I didn't sign a lease until this year. Wow, you got apartments that often without having to sign a lease? Yeah. Craigslist, baby. Whoa. Yeah, I was the Craigslist roommate. <laughs> Can you, I was the Craigslist roommate. That sounds like a true crime story. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that I'm so a normal. It's passion, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so normal that it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But I had a lot of trauma around being trapped. It does make sense because even normal people go through financial struggles all the time. You know what I mean? If I didn't have my dad, I would also have been in all of those situations because I was making around the same amount of money. And I mean, I'm still not making that much more. Yeah. So if I had to pay rent, if I had to pay for my own groceries, like all of that shit, you know? Yeah. Your cell phone, electricity, utilities, like student yeah. loans. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. A Transportation. Lot, a lot. Um, if I don't go to university in Israel, I would have been on ridiculous debt here from student loans. The f- tuition here is crazy. It's unreasonable. And I, I just, if anyone is listening who's college aged, 
transfer if you're at a school where you're taking out loans. It's not worth it. Loans are modern financial burdens that will stay with you for longer than you expect. Forever. They haunt me. Yeah. I have enough money that right now I could pay them off. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is I'd rather be liquid to mm. buy JPEGs. Yeah. Well, we need the money. <laughs> and, and this is where I lose the audience again. <laughs> I mean, we have to go to Coachella. Uh, okay, so so um, you could pay them off now, but how much have you paid off in interest? I've, I'm always curious Ooh, about that. I have no, do you understand Because interest is sometimes more, right? Let me just tell you, this. I have so much resentment and anger. I have worked on this because, no, I, I really resented my parents for a long time. Mm, because of this. I could go into even way more detail about my financial resentments, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to. Okay. But you might. <laughs> I'd like to, yeah. but I'm not going to. And I think, um, you know, it, finances are complicated. And I know it's a lot, a, a huge reason of why a lot of marriages fail. Because it's one of the number one reasons people fight. Mm -hmm. About the way of use of money, not having enough money. And every time, I, I just had this scarcity mentality constantly. And I also had fear when of commitment. You, when you say scarcity mentality, what do you mean by that? There was never going to be enough. Okay. Never enough money, never enough food, never enough clothes. Like just always scared that things would run out. So or, what did that do for you behavior wise? Were you like, eat, eat, did you eat more food when it was available? As quickly I mean? as possible. Okay. Literally the burger I ate last night at two in the morning. Huge mistake, by the way. Scarfed. I was with my friend Curtis and he was like, I am alarmed by how quick. He's like, I don't even think I saw your burger. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, did you had a burger? What? Yeah. He's like, where's your burger? And I was like, I finished it. He's like, like, didn't you order he a burger? He had one bite. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're still working on that. Though. We're working on yeah, that. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a work yeah. in progress. It's so insane. But yeah, no, I also had a, this huge fear of commitment where... I literally did not want to sign a lease because what if I didn't have enough money to pay the rent? Mm. So I wanted to illegally sublet so that if something happened, I was just month to month, I could leave and figure out a different housing situation. So it was having the financial commitments. That was the And the it all real stemmed struggle. from financial struggle. And, you right. know, knock on wood, I'm very lucky now. I'm very grateful for where I'm at because my financial situation has completely changed. And... I have done so much work on myself over the years mm -hmm. to be in a different mindset where I think I'm attracting abundance rather than scaring it away mm. and telling myself I'm not good enough or that I don't deserve things or that rich people are evil or bad or I'm like, rich people are some of the best people I know. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky to know a lot of incredible wealthy people who are generous and kind and beautiful souls. But I had very hard trauma around finances and, you know, I, I really wanted to be an artist. And once I finally gave myself permission to do it and quit my job at the bank and move to LA when was pursuing it here, you know, starting over is hard. And starting from the ground, I, I'm the only Jew I know that didn't have any connections in the biz. I'm like, I really ruined being Jewish. Are, the arts? Was that not going on while you were working at the bank? Did you not do any auditions or anything like that? On the side. Were you doing comedy yet at that point? No. no. I started comedy when I moved to LA. Got it. Got it. So I've been doing stand-up six years. So you didn't have much of a creative outlet while you were working at the bank? <sighs> no. I would do like small off-off Broadway shows. Okay. And I would go to casting director workshops and... You know, I started booking a couple of things here and there. Like I booked a commercial for Virgin Mobile and then I uh, shot a co-star for the pilot of How to Get Away with Murder. And then I was like, okay. I'm killing it. I'm going to move to L.A. <laughs> and then I moved to L.A. and I booked a whole bunch of non-union commercials. It was like I couldn't not book. I was killing it, honestly. But non-union commercials means you're making like $300 or like $500 or $1,500. You can't sustain yourself. Non-union means you're not part of the SAG, right? And not getting residuals. Okay. So it's very hard to live off of. Got it. And when you're a part of SAG, you get residuals off the commercials? Yes. Off of all the work you do. Okay. I mean, I'm obviously in the union Is now. that usually good money? It used to be, but it can be depending on the level of your participation in the TV show, the movie, or the commercial. Got it. So if you're like a guest star role or, or just a guest role on Modern Family or something and the episode went well, then you would get good residuals off that. Or yeah. Like every time it airs or if streaming service, how many people play it or... 
um, you know, people get cut out of things. Right. You know, you have to wait. <laughs> I, I can't even begin to tell you. I shot an international, two international Apple campaigns for their new phone. This is like five years ago. I would have made so much money mm. and they cut me and this other guy out of the commercial. Oh, so you don't get anything because they cut you out. Wow. But you did get paid for the actual work, obviously. But you just don't get the residuals. <laughs> That's just What's $2,500 going to do for me? Yeah. Okay, so two and a half years, bank, whatever, you quit. And then you moved to LA immediately after? Or was mm -hmm. there anything in between? No. And I came here and hit the ground running. And then I things started to slow down and got hard. And then I was like, oh, man, I got to cater. I got to host at restaurants. I got to... You know, I was really doing the starving artist lifestyle yeah. of working these. The thing is that if when you're going on auditions during the day, you can't have a day job. Right. So you just piece together how to make income with little side jobs, mm. side jobs here and there and unemployment or whatever you can get to get by. So I was just scraping by every month, just barely scraping by. Where were you living at the time? When I first moved to L.A., I stayed at a friend's house in Venice. Okay. And then eventually start paying her rent. And then I moved to Silver Lake okay. um, where I lived for two and a half years. And then I moved to Franklin Village for a year. And then I moved to the house in Silver Lake. And then I moved. It's like I was just bopping around. Yeah. And this was all Craigslist type things. Yeah. The whole time. Yep. Got it. Wow. Except for the one in Franklin Village. It was a friend who was left to join the circus in Vegas. It's a... <laughs> What a turn of events. I wish uh, I just said Craigslist. Yeah, I wow. wish I just said Craigslist. Wow. And it was really scrappy and it was really dark and it was really dirty. And there were some moments that I really... I thought I would be homeless. Mm. Like, there were a couple of times where I really went there in my head. But, or live in my car or, you know, it was really dark. How'd you make it through? Um, 12 step probably. Mm. That's right. You're a part of Al-Anon. Mm. What's that like? It gave me a new perspective on how to live. Mm. I think I mean, it changed my life. That's if you need help, get it. Uh, Al-Anon, by the way, is not AA. Right. So for anyone listening, AA is for is Alcoholics Anonymous and Al-Anon is the sister program, which is for friends and family members of alcoholics or people in dysfunctional families. And I think that, you know, I, I, was, I, I needed to retrain my brain. I needed to be reprogrammed because my, if I'm left to my own devices, my thinking is like drinking. Mm. You know, it's spiraling thoughts, it's chaos, it's darkness, it's um, self-sabotage, it's low self-esteem, it's, you know, um, scarcity mentality. It's all the worst qualities of me yeah. that I think kept me safe at some points where I thought I needed these traits to keep me safe from whatever it was, but they really held me back. They were your walls that you put up. Yeah. And, and also I think there's some sort of when you don't know any better or you don't want to, you know, surpass someone and make them feel bad or mm. you have guilt and shame and embarrassment around sex or money or career or whatever it is. And I think once I joined the program and had been in it for a few years is when I really started to feel like I was living because before that I was just white knuckling it. I was surviving, not thriving. So how do you, how do you Just feel like- Just giving you sound bites. Yeah, no, this is, this is great. It's really interesting to hear because I do think a lot of people don't know this side of you and just the struggle yeah. of, of everything that you put into who you are today. And I think that's really important. Do you feel like the scarcity mentality that you had um, with money and just with sort of things in general translated into your friendships and your relationships? Absolutely. And how, do, how did that manifest? <sighs> It's interesting because I think that I had a lot of friends who were like me mm. and playing it small. Mm -hmm. And I would feel very jealous of anyone who was doing better. Now when I have friends who are doing better, I'm like, fuck yeah. 
you yeah. know, win, yeah. kill it, yeah, get it. Because I know that that means that I'm in the right sphere. You know, it's like, I only want to be around people who are doing better than me. Right. Yeah. You don't want to be the, I, I, I want how, all my friends to succeed. Mm -hmm. I hate being in a room if I'm the smartest one. Cause then I'm surrounded by fucking idiots. Well, I'll never be the smartest <laughs> one in a room. Thank God. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, I, I, I value my friendships so much because I feel like I've grown so much as a person and seeing my friends is almost a reflection of that where I'm like, I get to be friends with this amazing person. How lucky am I? Yeah. You it's know, proudness by association, right? Where I'm like, yeah. that person wants to be friends with me. That must mean I don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> How cool, uh, you know? Yeah. No, but I think, uh, you know, everything really changed for me maybe like three years, three and a half years ago. A couple before the pandemic, I was hosting a show on E! Um, What's the called What the Fashion? What the fashion yeah, I was guest it? hosting on a few episodes and. That was so fun for me because I got to do fashion roasting and Joan Rivers is one of my idols. <laughs> I just almost felt Hello, it's darling. Fine, guys, I'm fine. You know, Joan Rivers is one of my idols and yeah. getting to roast is great and I love fashion. And Oh, you would roast the it was, Yeah, I would just joke, joke, joke. I would just like hilarious fire away. Was it just you or were you co hosting? Morgan Stewart and I don't know if I know her, but she's one of the main hosts at E. Okay. And then um Chester Lockhart and uh, Curly Velasquez. We were all kind of like rotating hosts Got because it. they were trying to figure out the new format and stuff. Hosts and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was so fun. And it was, it was like, that's when I felt like I got my stride. Mm. And then the pandemic hit. Duh. I feel like everyone has the same story. We're like, life was going well. And then the pandemic hit. Wait, so how long were you in LA before you started with the fashion? That was what, four, four years, three years? Like four years, yeah. So it was, it was four years of essentially just auditioning, trying things, not really landing too much. You landed a lot when you first got here and then the lulls. Lull. And then it was a struggle. I, I booked a couple co-stars. I booked a couple commercials. What's a co-star for people who don't know? Five lines and under on a television show. Okay, okay. On a union television show that's on a network. And that's after you'd become part of SAG? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I've been in the union since 2014. Were you represented at all during that time? Yes. Okay. 100%. I've had many different types of reps. And it's interesting because people don't realize how much of a miracle it is when you book something. Mm. Like over 5,000 people are submitted for a role that's five lines and under. And then a casting director brings in 20 to 30 people. And then one person gets it. Mm. And the odds are so slim. So slim. And the thing is that it's almost a catch-22 because it's like you don't want to book too many co-stars because then you get trapped in a, oh, she only does that sort of role. Mm. So then you want to get booked for something bigger. But oftentimes you don't have enough tape for people to even get you into the guest star role. And a lot of people who are series regulars, leads of TV shows, will take guest star roles if they're not working. And you're never going to book it if a celebrity is auditioning. Right. Because they'll just get an offer. And the other thing is because of SAG rules, you'll still audition because they have to legally audition people, but you're never going to get it. So it's just a heartbreak because you put your all into it, but you in the back of your head are like, but I probably won't get this. Do you feel like building a following helps in that situation or do they not really care? They absolutely care. People yeah. need fan bases. And I think that that's proven by how Joe Rogan has a huge fan base. Yeah. And... You know, a lot of these like TikTokers and social media stars have huge fan bases and then they can cross over into other platforms. But mainstream networks aren't getting as many listens as Joe Rogan is getting. Mainstream platforms aren't getting as many views as some of these TikTok stars, you know. And so they want to collaborate now with people who are getting that many views. And I feel very fortunate that I'm starting to get a much bigger following yeah. because I do think this will help casting because more people will know who I am. But it was interesting because there was a certain point where then I got super big rep and they would only send me out for series regulars, but I would never book the series regular. So you just, so you had a great rep, but. And it, it just always felt like the timing was wrong or the, I just couldn't get my foot in the door and everyone loved me, but they just didn't know what to do with me. You know, they're like, you're not famous. You can't be a lead in the show yeah. because people can't take bets on non-famous people when people are dying for, when networks are hurting for so numbers badly. and money, yeah. you know, especially pandemic time. It's like no one could take a chance. And so 
I also have two TV shows that are written with another female comic. We want to pitch those out. Like I just, ha- I've been doing a lot forever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm doing live shows. I got podcasts. I've been, like it's just the amount of work that people see is only the tip of the iceberg. You know this because yeah. you have your own podcast. They don't see everything that goes into all of the projects <laughs> that you make. I have no idea. All of the dirty, nitty gritty that goes on behind the scenes is exhausting. When people call and say like, do you have an hour? I want to pick your brain. I just crack up. If anyone says <laughs> I want to pick your brain, the answer is no. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Do I'll- I have an hour? If I have an hour, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> if someone asks if they can pick my brain, I say, oh, my rate is $1,000. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they'll say no, and then I don't have to do it. Exactly. And if they want to pay me $1,000, yeah, you could pick my brain for $1,000 <laughs> for half an hour. But do, um, do you, so during that time before you got cast on E, was there ever any auditions that you you almost got or that were really close? Anything that, any sort of like peak that stuck out to you? Yeah, but I'd rather tell you about the time <laughs> okay. that I auditioned for Maisel. Oh, yes, that's right. You did audition for Maisel, (gasps) a Jewish comedian who talks fast and is perky. I did not book it. I bombed my audition. They sent me 15 pages of dialogue the night before. Wow. Seven pages was a monologue. And then they make you memorize all of it. And then when I got to the audition, there was a sign on the door that said, choose one scene. (laughs) Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Don't waste my fucking time. Yeah, motherfucker. Don't waste my time. Tell me ahead of time you can choose one scene. Yeah, and then you learn one really well. I mean, you only have a night. It, it's it's They don't set you up for success a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know? And I go in, Amy Sherman Palladino is there. The creator, showrunner, executive producer, Gilmore Girls, and Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I bomb. I've never cried harder for longer in my life. I left there just ripping on myself I was like I'm so stupid I I mean that is actually part of my rock bottom where I was like I can't live like this what time period was this uh I'd only been in program maybe for like six months okay so you're not really like moving mountains at that point like a couple years after you got to LA basically is there a bee sting on top of my head (laughs) (laughs) is there why do you have a buzz it hurts so bad hold on no (laughs) Is it? What's happening? Is there a swarm of bees <laughs> on my... Are you okay? Is it the headphones? Do they hurt? Yeah, but I'm fine now. Are you sure? Yeah, it just hurt a different part of my head. The, are the bees like, are they okay? I don't want the bees hurting you. Do you want to trade? I feel like that Oprah mean where it's like, bees! Do you want to trade? These might be more... No, no, no. No? no are I'm you good. sure you're okay? Yeah, but let me know if there's a, a hornet. Okay, I'll, I'll keep you posted. I mean, I don't... I think that they've gone. They For look like... Free. Are they planting honey in your hair? I believe they might be. Yeah. Dear Lord. Did you ever want to, during that time in LA, rock bottom, after Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, like all all of this shit, during that whole period, that four period, that four year period that was crazy for you and tumultuous, um, did you ever just want to give up? How did you keep, <laughs> how did you keep if the I motivation? I tell you the amount of times that I called friends being like, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm giving up. I'm going to get a full-time job. I'll, like about mentally ill but what ha- what kept you going then through that just the the knowledge that at some point you could make it if you just kept going I'm not good at anything else <laughs> <laughs> no I just I never wanted to actually quit mm. I just was so sad and disappointed and frustrated and I feel like saying those things gave me a reason why I wasn't doing well it's like, because then I could say I wasn't even really trying. Mm. And if you don't dive head first in. Yeah. And I mean, when I started doing comedy, that gave me an outlet. And I, I didn't take it as seriously as I could have. But then I started taking it seriously. And I took some time off in between. And when I started pounding the pavement, you know, I was going like four or five open mics a night. And people don't realize like you pay to play. You know, so you're paying five bucks every open night. You're driving around waiting, you know, three hours to do three minutes in front of other comedians who don't care about your set and are just talking in the back. It's like, you know, it's so hard to get better. Yeah. And it's a real grind. You have to love it. If you don't love it. When did you start comedy? Six years ago. And that was how long after you'd gone to L.A.? A year. Oh, so you were, so while you were pursuing acting and doing all the auditions and having soul crushing moments in that area, you were also pursuing comedy. Yes. Did you feel like comedy maybe helped balance out the sort of angst of acting at all? 
Yeah, I mean, especially as a theater-based actor. You know, I, musical theater was my dream. Mm. I cannot dance to save my life. I'm the <laughs> whitest person that ever lived. But I heard you singing on TikTok. Oh my God, thank What's you. Song? I posted yeah. that only because they kept banning all my content. And so I was like, <laughs> what is the least offensive thing? I'm like, just this video of me playing piano and singing. And you know what? That video was under review for eight hours. Wow. That's how much they were watching me. Wow. TikTok is really on yeah. them. They're, They're like, like, is Leah? this bitch going to bring up Wuhan again? So. <laughs> well, we did today. Um, what was I telling you about? So you did comedy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, you no, did comedy. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think it, you know, returning to the stage was good for me. Mm -hmm. And it was an outlet to be creative. And to still feel like I was pursuing my dream. I just didn't even realize that. I didn't realize. First of all, stand-up is not at all the same thing as acting. I would like to make this clear. They are separate professions. Right. And Clearly. You don't. Un there are some people who might just think it's all wrapped in the same blanket. Really? I don't know. That's crazy. People, I think people just think if you're in entertainment, you're in entertainment. And yeah, I'm just like, because so many people cross over in different areas. It's not easy. Right. A lot of actors try stand up, bomb. And bomb. A lot of comics are bad actors. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, and I don't, I mean that emotionally and <laughs> <laughs> professionally. Um, oh, they're all bad actors. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, I just, I just think that stand up gave me the will to continue on. I felt like I kept getting better and better and I kept getting more opportunities from that. And I feel like I just started gravitating toward where the water was warm. Mm. And I was really anti-hosting because I felt like it was the death of my acting career. By hosting, do you mean hosting on TV or hosting comedy shows? Uh, hosting on television. Okay. But I just was getting that sort of, sort of work. You know, I was doing like guest hosting for America's Funny Home Videos. and Oh, was that before um, E? Yeah. That's cool. And I even did that during the pandemic too. Okay. But- you know, and hosting for LATV, which love them. I was their diversity hire, which is so funny. I oh, was their white person. Wait, LATV, the Latin, the, my friend works there. Which friend? Beatrice. Don't know Beatrice. She's worked with Nikki and stuff. And also, um, but I love that. I love them. But yeah, I, so it's, funny. it's obvious because when you're someone who's naturally funny, yeah, people need that skill for hosting. It's a huge part of hosting. Having quick wit is a massive part of hosting. When you're naturally funny. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever watch Courtney Kardashian? Uh, not Courtney Kardashian, sorry, Chloe, uh, hosting X Factor or some shit with Mario Lopez. How was that? It was an atrocity, really, is what it was. It was it was like Mario was bringing his younger sibling to work day every single time. Oh, is she not funny? It's not that she's not funny. Like, she's just not, she doesn't have that sort of quick... It's a, it's a skill. It's hard. And we're lucky that we both have it. Yes. Yes. And that's why our conversations are probably too much for the average person to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> if you've made it to this point in the podcast, you deserve an, a participation award. Or a cookie for my snack tray. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I relate to a lot of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I actually, I started acting classes recently, by the way. Yeah. I, I didn't think I would like it. I just sort of dabbled because um, my manager suggested it. And so I went and one of our fa good family friends is an acting teacher. Who? And I just took Dina Brandis. Okay. I don't she, know. She's great. And she... Um, uh, after one class with her, I kind of just fell in love. I was like, this is so much fun. This is a really good time. But I, but I also love this stuff and I love hosting and I don't think I would, you know, if that ruins my future acting career, which it possibly could, because I agree. I had no idea you wanted to be an actor. It's not like, I mean, I was from LA. So when yeah. I was, you know, a kid, it was always on my mind, yeah. but it was never, it was never the main thing. I think once podcasting became an industry, I pretty much wanted to do this for forever and also just talking and being on air and just being a personality has always been more appealing than necessarily being an actress but I do feel that sort of I don't know there's a tension there between do I want to just dive into this area that I'm so good at and that I'm getting jobs in or do I want to sort of save myself for the mystique to be able to play like different characters and things like that but I think that nowadays it's kind of acceptable to really go into both well it's interesting because that's kind of what I was talking about with comedy where I was like this is where the water was warm so I just did that instead. Mm. And, you know, now that it's clear that stand up is really my, my bag. Yeah. Um, I really dove headfirst into that, but I, it, you know, as someone who's been acting for so long, 
and then just uh, kind of pivoted. And is I I used to consider myself an actor who did comedy, and now I feel like I'm a comedian who acts. Mm, that must be a weird change for you. Very weird. But I mean, I came to LA thinking I was going to be like a young ingenue in trilogies <laughs> and a dramatic actor. And I met with this casting director, and she's like, "I just want to let you know, you're more funny, less pretty." <laughs> okay, you've told me yeah. that one before. And I was like, oh my god! You're like, well, okay. You think I'm funny? Yeah, um, so nice of you. <gasps> literally, yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, I think you can be whatever you want. Always. You know, J Joe Rogan and I had this conversation in the parking lot of the comedy store like five years ago where I was like, I really want to be an actor. I really want to be in a show. And he was like, why? Mm. Why not just have your own podcast, get really good at stand up and just have freedom and have your own schedule and have your own life and not have to be on anyone else's time or anyone else's watch and just make your own money. And I was like, no <laughs> <laughs> you're like nah <laughs> but now that is my life right you know now I have my own podcast and now I you know go on tour and have my own merch and brand deals and I'm like freedom is actually my number one goal it is really nice not being beholden to a network or to people or to just a having schedule. a schedule god like a call time at 6 5 a.m whatever it is just so absurd and then you're on set for 14 hours yes and I mean it's grueling. Being an actor is so hard. And I remember even after just five days on set, I would be exhausted. I didn't, I didn't even think I could perform well because I was so tired from just being on set. Mm -hmm. There's the job of acting and then there's the business of acting, mm -hmm. you know, and I, they're two separate things and people don't realize that until they make mistakes, which I'd made plenty of. I'm burping a lot, by the way. It's fine. Maybe it's the Tom's <laughs> coffee or tea or green apple or the kettle corn. We've had snacks today, guys. <laughs> so do you, so the way that I kind of see it and tell me if you feel similar is just this idea of I want to do my thing as much as humanly possible. And if other opportunities come my way, like acting opportunities, and if it's, if it works with what's happening, then yeah, I might dive in, but I'm not trying to go. Like I personally, I, everything you're telling me now about the whole audition lifestyle, I can't do that. I physically don't think I could ever be in that space like PTSD. to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I think maybe now because of COVID with all the sort of send and tape audition styles, it might be a little bit easier for me to get on board, but I still don't think I could audition and be rejected as often. But Oof, if I so much rejection, you know, if someone like, you know, reaches out, you know, and there's a podcaster role on some TV show and they want me to fill it because they're like thinking of me, then yeah, I'd probably take that. And then maybe that leads to other acting opportunities. But I just don't know if I could go through that whole thing. It just seems like insanity. Constant rejection. Constant. And and then there's the callback and then you get your hopes up again. And then there's, you know, the, the network pitches where you like, ugh, it's just, there's so many rounds and layers. And then you go to producers and then you get your hopes up again. And it's like the whole time there was always an offer and you were never going to get it. Or mm. you didn't, or, or you get so close and it's between you and one other person, you don't get it. And it's like the amount of energy and time you put into something that you're not getting paid for. <laughs> it's just so intense. It's a lot. But, you know, I am kind of hoping to just bypass the auditioning process yeah. and get to a point where I can just get offers. Yeah. You know, that, that is my dream. I think you're on your way there and I'm not just Thank saying you. that I really do. And it's kind of sad that we live in a society where you do need a following and you know, this big hype and stuff to be able to get there. And that skill alone isn't going to do it, Yeah, but that is kind of where we live. And I'm happy that after everything that we've now just heard of your whole story that you're in this moment now where you are seeing a huge rise because clubhouse was great. All of that was great. And you got to level, but now with this virality that's happening with your reels, I mean, you're really skyrocketing. Thank you. And I, I feel like a lot of people see that and they think she's so lucky. You know, I wish I could just stumble onto this like she did. Well, there was no stumbling onto it. There was so much work that led up to it. And even before everything that you were talking about, you were doing acting classes also before, right? Yeah. So it's like, this has been, you know, a majority of your life. This isn't just something that has happened now. So I do hope you get to a point where you're getting offers. I think that that would be fantastic for you. Thanks, Shawnee. And I, you know what? I think for both of us, because I, I see a lot of me and you and vice versa. Yes. That it's just the possibilities are endless. And I think life is long. Mm -hmm. Life is short, but life is long. It depends on how you want to look at it. And who knows, you know, maybe I'll hit it when I'm 
65 in a Golden Girls revival. You know, I don't know. I would kill it on that. Oh my God. What a dream that would be. Wow. (gasps) But do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I think I'm going to continue to go where the water is warm, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's why we both hopped into web three because the water is warm there. The water is warm and the money is wet. (laughs) Liquid. So good. Thank you. So I'm horny for that sentence. <laughs> Me too, right? God, clean up an aisle, Leah. Got- <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, I I am now noticing now, l- life is long, so why make it hard? Mm. So I used to just continually push the rock up the hill, and now I'm like, no, no, go where there's momentum. Yeah. Even if it's not what f- you want, it will. Everything will come to you if you go where it's easy. And, you know, stand up, I never, ever thought that this would be my profession. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even funny for a long time because I was suppressing my personality because I didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable. I was such a pupil pleaser and such a doormat and quiet. I was quiet in the way that I was just like a silent leader. (laughs) I don't know how (laughs) to explain that. I didn't ever want to ruffle any feathers, you know, but it's like now I have a voice. Now I'm, um, yeah, I mean, excuse me. Can you guys not blow leaves? Where I actually might go tell them to come back. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so now that we're back, I just want to also say it's funny that there were people who would not talk to me or give me the time of day who are now trying to get my attention. Yeah. And trying to have coffee. Mm. But I'm so busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, I couldn't get into any of the clubs. People wouldn't take me seriously as a comedian because whatever i'll let you use your imagination sure um and you know now it's like i get to feature for dane cook and eric griffin and chris red and then i i started headlining and i headlined the new york comedy festival and i got to play the laughing spree fest which andrew schultz was at and then i got to meet andrew and i'm so inspired by andrew's hustle and i what a legend i I mean his i just watched his crowd work special the other night again and I'm going to do a crowd work special now because wh- I watched it and I, you know that my Your crowd work, crowd videos, work is so good, Leah. And you. I don't just say that, you know that your crowd work is fucking bomb. I love those videos and the way you cut them up. It's just brilliant. And you've been to a show. So you yeah. know what I'm like on stage. And for me, the idea of just doing a crowd work special is gold because essentially I am just the star of a dinner table. <laughs> and everyone is at my mercy. Leah's Shabbat, Leah's Shabbat dinner. Yeah, Leah's I'm table Jesus. Of hell. And yeah, Ooh. <laughs> gold. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm like, I, I'm just gonna keep going where the water's warm. Yeah, building on what I have, continuing on this trajectory that feels upward, and not making my life harder than it needs to be. You know, I don't need to create problems. I like to solve the issues and move forward. I'm reading this book right now that's really helping me. I would suggest this if you'd like to read it. Um, the Secrets of a Millionaire Mindset. I am actually paying attention to you. I just had to push back a call. Yes. No, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have to leave soon. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was 45 <laughs> minutes late. Anyway, so I was come on comedy time. What do you want? <laughs> it's also Moroccan time. Yeah. Wait, Secrets of a what? Millionaire's Mindset? Millionaire Mindset. And... It really has changed a lot of my outlook on, I I would like to say that even before reading this, my financial status has done a 180. (laughs) Right, right. You know, I think the pandemic was unfortunately very good for me. Yes, yes. Apologies to everybody else. Apologies to everyone who did not have a good pandemic, which is all of us. But um, I had a decent, well, I also, professionally, I blossomed. Right. And financially, I completely blossomed. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful for both of those things, Mm. you know. Um, But I will say, I think that the reason that I shot up and it skyrocketed during the pandemic was because all it did was remove the air, the barrier to entry and the gatekeepers. Right. So it just even the playing field. No one wanted to give me credit for being funny. Mm. They just did it. I still get that. I was just hanging out with someone the other day who and I'm not going to say who it is, but a very successful comedian who's like, it's so hard for me to see you as a comedian. An actress, yes, you're beautiful. But wow. as a comedian, I don't, it's like, why do you need to do this? I saw you on stage. You were fucking great. Well, I know, but there are things, some old school people yeah. with the mentality of beautiful women shouldn't be doing comedy or don't need to or whatever mm-hmm. it is. And it's like, this is who I am. Yeah. This is what I do. I can't change that. This is the most authentic version of who I am. And 
I'm like this on and off the stage 24 seven. You know that you're my friend. Yeah. And, and yeah, I feel, I feel very lucky. <laughs> my friend, you've seen me naked. You, I've seen you, I've seen your vagina. <laughs> you have. So examined it. Your ass. I've seen, I've seen it all. Babe. All of it really. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's men. Mm hmm. Hear that? A one. Yeah. So. <laughs> the girls laughed um but but yeah you know and and i feel i feel very grateful that the casting directors that the the bookers that all these people were kind of sidestepped so that talent could emerge and they always say talent rises to the top you know the cream rises to the top and i got lucky Mm -hmm. all these years of hard work and dedication paid off yeah finally because people were finally able to see and the funny thing was at the clubhouse no one could see me right they could just hear me (laughs) you think that helps honestly (laughs) yeah honestly yeah Yeah. and then i started getting to tour and that's how i make dane and dane is an angel yeah fucking man i just love that guy to pieces and honestly what an icon you know to be (sighs) able to go and he's the goat open for him like that it's pretty awesome insane yeah. And played the Chelsea Theater at the Cosmopolitan in Vegas with him. I was about to like say in Vegas. 3,000 people. Mm. And I, I was on a high from that for, I'm still high from it. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> Almost the, as high as I am. Yeah. One of the best experiences <laughs> of my life. Yeah. Truly of my life. Yeah. And I can't wait to see, you know, it's like, and then you want to be at the point where, but now I'm the headliner and now I'm the one bringing a feature and I want to help more comics, which is what I did during the pandemic. I made a lot of comic i gave a lot of comics a lot of opportunities yeah, to you rise did. you absolutely did hot on the mic was huge yeah i i mean like i i loved it i loved every i loved being so involved i'm not a comedian at all never did stand up i just funny by birth if you will yeah and you are you know i felt so included in hot on the mic mm. i just felt so i was always up there always like the second mod helping out doing like it just felt so great i fucking loved that community i think it's just it was so beautiful what you built and i do feel like clubhouse was so conducive to being able to get you the exposure that you deserve for all of these years you know thank you and you know obviously you're gorgeous and you're hot but i was telling this to nicole that can honestly be a hindrance so often in our lives and it's not even it's like sometimes you can be too hot sometimes you can be too ugly sometimes you can be too this and it's just if you just remove physical appearance altogether oftentimes like authenticity really seeps through so i agree i'm sure that that really did help a lot people don't want women to be more than one thing especially beautiful and anything else Mm. if you're beautiful and smart beautiful and funny beautiful smart and funny forget it it's a disaster for people to it's a disaster it's a recipe for people to hate you Mm. and that's because there's jealousy involved from women Mm -hmm. there's internalized misogyny there's men who don't want you to be better than them and just want to see you as a submissive subordinate assistant what receptionist you know there and that's kind of like an old school mentality or i think that's obviously changing now well, what's funny is that I think that that's more within the actual industry, which is really what hinders the rise. Right. But once you actually pull the public, once you put yourself out there to the masses, right, mm-hmm. they all love a woman who's gorgeous, smart and funny. You know what I mean? And there's so much. And then the turn happens because then the industry starts saying, oh, I can make money off this person now. So now I'm going to support them. But until you get to that point and like we're talking about now, breaking that barrier mm-hmm. of the audience it's so it, the struggle is real very real yeah and it has not been an easy journey and it has not been glamorous as i've shared and god just even thinking about looking at bank statements and being like okay do i need to cancel my 20 dollar gym membership mm-hmm. you know like that feeling is so bad and so dark and so sad Horrible. i had to cancel going to my best friend from high school's wedding a month before because i literally couldn't afford it god that's so rough i could not afford it i i just remember looking at my bank account thinking if i go into any more debt i'm insane when did you finally get out of debt was it pandemic was it (sighs) from the e-job or was it from money you made from clubhouse later Mm. Well, when the pandemic started, I started teaching Pilates from my bedroom three times a week. That's right. You're a Pilates teacher. I used to be. Now I'm yeah. fat. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got the head. That ass though. Yo. And these titties. Yes. God, I'm so unlikable. Mm. And 
Uh, yeah. I like you. So <laughs> if I was not me listening to this podcast, I would love it, but I love listening to the sound of my own voice. It's really a blessing and a curse. <laughs> I should go to the Peace Corps. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. I'll book my ticket soon. Uh, oh, God, Shadi. Uh huh. Yeah. What is it like being so hot and so funny? I have, I don't, you know, <laughs> so hard to articulate. <laughs> So, in conclusion, so, so so you got out of debt in the pandemic because of because the hosting jobs, or was it because of? Well, I was slowly getting out of debt during that time beforehand. Got it. You know, I was slowly paying off credit cards. I was slowly. Was it because you were booking more jobs, or just being more responsible? But about well, I had been being more responsible. Okay, I had been done. Oh, I had done been. I had no choice. Right. You know. No choice. Mm -hmm. Um, When I was in New York, I was irresponsible. When I was in LA, I was very responsible. Got it. Got it. Very responsible. Um, I woke up. Yeah. Because you were like, I'm not fucking doing that six story walk up again. I'm not living in my car. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not living with a heroin addict who's going to bottom out at five in the morning and break all our furniture and then ask me to pay for it. You know? Right. Um, (sighs) You know, when he got sober, he never made an amends to me. And that always fucked with me. I was like, are you fucking wow, kidding me? Did he skip a step? No, he just didn't think he owed me a fucking apology. Damn. Bitch. Wow. Uh, ha- how about you shaving your pubes and leaving it on the toilet? I could have used an apology. Oh, <laughs> I used to have a cousin that would use my razors. No, 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 no. I can't. And I on I would just throw them out after because I'm like, I can't. What is this? And there was just hair everywhere. My hair is <laughs> everywhere. Okay, and uh, we actually have a song in my family about that hair. There, well, you're where Moroccan, there is hair, so it's hair. <laughs> yeah. It's your hair is literally everywhere. Thank you. Yeah. So, so you're finally getting out of debt slowly through it, and then Clubhouse, Clubhouse hits, and you guys started making. I remember you were the first people I found out that were making actual money hosting rooms and doing that kind of stuff. Sponsorships. Yeah. Which was very cool. And then getting tips. Yeah. So comics were getting tipped through Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. Dude, I made like $500 in tips one, one hot on the mic day. On my birthday, I made $2,500. Hot damn. I mean, that's a good day's work yeah. for two hours. Yeah. Anyone would take that. I was like freaking out the day I made 500 I couldn't believe it. During the pandemic, I was making so much money. Mm. I really, from hot on the mic, specifically doing stand-up rooms, mm. people were tipping me a lot. Tipping, so was tipping a big part of the boost initially? Yeah. But also, I was walking dogs. I had a... You were walking dogs during the pandemic? Oh, my God. On WAG or just I, individual? No, uh, through a private company. Oh, okay. I was working with them directly. I was teaching Pilates. I was doing, like, tech sales and hosting tech conferences via Zoom. I was, like, working at a startup. I had a lot of side jobs that I was doing all at the same time. And I was saving money because I wasn't spending money on gas. Mm -hmm. And I, I just was able to save so much. From those and jobs. I got, and I got some grants. So that was from you, arts. That was before. That was really before your sort of like new rise right now. Yes. So you were able to sort of get yourself out of debt. So do you yes. think fi- being able to get yourself in a position that was more relaxed financially freed your mind to be able to dive into yes. Clubhouse and creating content in that whole world? <sighs> yes and no. I think financial freedom gave me my life back. Because I'm not constantly thinking, oh, I shouldn't buy this because I need to pay off my loan. I can't, I can't, I shouldn't get this banana because, you know, I'll put this last thing. No, but also that's also scarcity mentality. Mm-hmm. And now I just, now I have the mindset where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy that thing that I want because I'll just make it back. I just know I will. That's it. That's the difference now is that, you know, every time I bet on myself, I win. I love that. You know, it's like just the other day I was like, ooh, should I buy that couch? And then I was like, yeah, you should buy that couch. Because you're going to make it back immediately. And then instantaneously, I got an email for a sponsorship for something that was almost the same exact amount of money. Wow. Uh, Talk about kismet. An effortless job where I was like, yeah, that's great. I love that. But I I believe that it. you have to believe in yourself before anyone else. 100%. And you have to double down on you. You have to invest in you. It, It doesn't matter if you are... 
I'm going to take back the words I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but but let me let me try this one. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Mm. You have to blindly believe there's a level of delusion that you need to have to make it as an entertainer because there's a lot of work that goes into it and there's so much hardship that if you think it's just going to be a cakewalk and you're just going to walk right in and suddenly be a star first of all you're here for the wrong reasons (laughs) yeah you know second of all it's about the art so if you believe in your artistic abilities keep pushing as hard as you can my family was not supportive of this dream. I think they thought I had my head in the clouds. And when you don't have anything to show for it, they're not wrong. Besides your delusion that you are good enough and that you will one day make it, whatever that means to you. And you know, now that I have things to show for it, It's easy. I remember I did an Eminem commercial with Mario Lopez right before the pandemic. And my parents were so excited. And I'm like, this is what we're excited about. You know, what about the hours that I'm putting into countless hours and upon hours and pounding the pavement, getting better at stand up and building my way up to finally pay, getting paid to do comedy instead of paying to do comedy and touring, you know, it's like, these are the things that are important to me. Yeah. And, you know, I see myself now, I'm so grateful all the time. I'm content with my life. I'm happy. I feel lucky. And I just try not to complain. I try not to blame. I try to remain positive. And I try to have an abundance mentality. And I am steering myself toward celebrating everyone's wins instead of, and I will say that that's been a journey. I used to be so jealous and so, you know, zero sum game mentality. And I just thought that there wasn't enough for everyone. And now I'm like, Oh, there's more than enough for all of us. You know, it's like, I want all my friends to kill it. I want all my friends to like, I hope that you have the biggest podcast. Thank you. You know, I hope you and Joe Rogan are on each other's podcasts. Yeah. You know, and like I could list off all of our friends. Yeah. But it's like all of our friends are fucking killing it. I, I love being friends with people that are as motivated and as driven in their fields as I am in, in mine and just in life in general, actually, to be honest, regardless of field. I just think the drive that we all have in whatever it is that we go into, mm-hmm. you know, even just now entering the NFT space, the crypto space, like we all are, we're just so driven in everything we do. And I love having friends with that same sort of mutual, you know, just desire. And so I, I want to see them win because I know how much I also want to win. So I know how incredible that must feel. I'll never forget when Georgia bought her condo. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like that's such a, an amazing accomplishment. That's something that I've been dreaming of for so long that must feel out of this world for her. And I was just so elated that somebody got there. You know what I mean? That somebody was able to achieve that. And I just felt so happy so I totally agree and it sounds like honestly everything that you've been talking about is just this idea of you know people aren't going to support you on your rise per se especially during the hard times because they won't support you before the rise and they won't support you during the rise (laughs) right right but they will after yeah because there's no evidence while you're struggling that you're at any point going to make it and so people only want to you know jump on the bandwagon once they see the potential there kind of a thing yeah but like I was talking about this with Nicole as well you know, I what Im- I'm so, so Im- proud of Nicole. It's it's incredible, she, but she's I, I able to spot so people from small. You know what I mean? She doesn't. She, she discovered she spo- me exactly. She spotted. You. She spotted me. me. Yo. Yeah. Nicole fucking discovered all of us. I know. She discovered Andrew Schultz for God's sake. I like, literally honored she discovered me because I know she discovered Andrew it's Schultz. Crazy, and she has such. And I I felt I such got the a, chills just talking about her. Even yeah. I'm like, oh, she's such a queen. She absolutely is queen royalty. Mm. But but when you see when we when we see our friends like Nicole and Georgia like killing it, doesn't it make you feel like oh I can do it too? Yeah, and it also just makes me feel like I'm friends with badass bitches. It, absolutely, you know what I mean? and and that these people want to be in my sphere. I'm yeah. like they think that I have something that's in that sphere. You know, something yeah. of equal or greater value. Like we're all learning from each other. Mm-hmm. 
And that's the coolest part about it. 100%. I completely agree. Anyways, Leah, I feel like I we should go. wrap up because you got to run because you were so late. I have late. to go to the comedy store yes. for a podcast. Oh, excellent. Well, where can people find you and tell us a little bit about your podcast just so people know? Real time crime. Baby. I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah? All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Even to shill your, for your following? I mean, come on, Leah. Uh, you want to Netflix and shill later? <laughs> hey, Netflix and shill. Netflix show. and shill. Yo, let's do a Twitter space called Netflix and Shill. Okay, crop this out of the podcast. Okay. And we're going to save this for us. Oh, okay. God damn it. I'm always having to cut out ideas. Me and, and my friends just are Just like geniuses. Nicole said, just put a beep. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Hilarious. Genius. She's a genius. Okay. You can find me at Leah Lamar on Instagram and Twitter. That's two R's. The extra R is for ridiculous. Okay. And then <laughs> I hate myself. I saw that I turned to camera two. Yeah, we're like, You're like camera two, yeah, camera, camera, three, camera, 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 up. One, camera one, camera okay. <laughs> one. Uh, where's my best lightning? Okay. And then TikTok, Leah Lamar, Leah Lamar, Leah Lamar, I'm a pirate. Leah five, Lamar. five R's. Yeah. You'll notice me cause I'm the one with over 140,000 followers. And then <laughs> so stupid. you'll find some videos with millions of views. Yeah. And then if you go to Leah or my Instagram, honestly, you'll know about all my tour dates. I'll be at South by I'll be in New York soon. I'll be, I'm just traveling all around doing stand up. So on my website, I have a merch and B tour dates and, uh, my podcast real time crime on iHeart, And it's with Teddy Mellencamp who I adore. And so if you like comedy and true crime, listen, cause it's the best. I think I covered all my bases. Yeah. I think you got the bases. I stay frozen in this position for the First rest of base, time. Second base, third base, fourth <laughs> base. Do we do it? Do we hit the home run? I'm still an anal virgin. Have I taken your virginity yet? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect place to end. Love I you, love Johnny. you. I Woo! love you. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, really nice shot of your ass in the camera right now. Wow, yeah, and that actually looks so oh my god, yeah, no. Go a little like that that way. Ooh, wow. 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 You see she's a cupping girl. Lady, ladies and gentlemen, Leah Lamar. Leah Lamar. Ooh. <laughs> Did I blow out your cameras because I'm so white? Yeah. Well, you just match the walls.